Good morning, all, and welcome to another edition of Wednesday Wake Up, where we take a dive into God's Word and and hopefully uh, take that lesson with us for the remainder of the week. Uh, today's passage is a familiar one. It's about Jesus speaking with Nicodemus, the whole uh, born again conversation, uh, ending with the famous John 3.16. Uh, but I think that it's really a message of the belief and what do we base our beliefs upon. And Jesus gave Nicodemus an image or an illustration that he probably was reminded of for the, re for the rest of his life. Um, and I hope that maybe we can take that image, that image of wind, uh, the reminder of the Holy Spirit being like wind, uh, and remember that for the rest of our lives, or maybe at least for the rest of this week. Um, so here now reading from the gospel according to John chapter 3 verses 1 through 16. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, but no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born have, after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say, that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the word of God of the people of God. And thanks be to God. And so Nicodemus was speaking with, with Jesus at night. Now, who is Nicodemus? He's described as a, as a leader of the Jews and as a Pharisee. So Pharisees were the religious elite. They were the ones uh, who knew the Bible, knew God's word, were given the task of, of studying it day and night and relaying to the people what it actually means. Um, Nicodemus was probably taken to the temple when he was a little kid and maybe found early on uh, to be uh, one that would grow up to be a Pharisee, to be a leader, to, to be able to recite scriptures, to um, be a part of the, the worship service. And so for, for Nicodemus's entire life, he was vested in God's word. He read what we uh, called the Old Testament, all of the Hebrew scriptures. He, he recited them. He, he read commentaries on them. He knew them inside and out. And he was elevated to a, a leadership position, kind of like a, you know, our bishop. If you think of, of our bishop, that's who Nicodemus was. Um, someone who knew the scripture, but also was in a leadership position in order to, to explain the scripture. And he, he invested his entire life to this calling. But yet, there was this Jesus person that was walking around that was that was explaining God's word that was relating to the kingdom of God and relating to God in a way that that Nicodemus couldn't uh, despite all of the years of training and all of the the hours that he gave up his childhood in order to study God's word he he still felt that he wasn't connected to God as well as Jesus was connected to God and so he approached Jesus at night now, some scholars say that he approached him at night to to have one on a one on one conversation because during the day Jesus was was being um, you know surrounded by crowds of people that wanted to learn more about him to understand who he was 
And so uh, Nicodemus came at night to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I think it's more likely that the Nicodemus, being the religious elite, didn't want to be caught out in public with this, with this new rebel, with this new Jesus person that uh, was saying that he was the Messiah. Um, and so just in case Jesus wasn't who he said he was, he, he approached him at night to find out what he was all about. Because I think Nicodemus looked at Jesus and, and probably it was a combination of, of envy, saying, you know, how, how do you know God so well? I studied God my whole life and I don't feel like I know him as well as you display you know him. I was probably uh, amazed by it, uh, threatened by it, and, and was just curious and wanted to know what Jesus knew. How do, how do you connect to God as well as, as you have? And so Jesus tried to explain it. He, he explained about the kingdom of heaven and saying that, that you can't be a part of the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again. And that throws Nicodemus for a loop because he's, Nicodemus is getting all logical, right? Because he was a scholar. He was a, he was a logical, methodical person um, and said, no one can be born a second time. That makes no sense. You see, even... Even that through Nicodemus, his, his logic should have told him that his, his scholarship on Ezekiel, um, the, the prophet Ezekiel said in the Old Testament that, that I will turn your heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit inside of you. Nicodemus just, just didn't even remember that because, because he was just getting all in his head about logically that makes no sense to be born again. What are you talking about? You must be a fraud. And so Jesus took another approach. He, he took an approach that, that Nicodemus probably remembered for the rest of his life. Every time he felt the breeze on his cheek, he said, listen, you know how the wind exists, right? No one, no one questions the existence of wind. And you feel it on your cheek. You see the, the leaves ruffling in the, in the trees. And you hear the wind. But you don't know where it came from, and you don't know where it's going to. And, and that's... That's how the, the Spirit of God works. You don't have to prove that it exists. You know that it exists. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going to, but that's how the Spirit of God works. And I think this is one of the neatest parts of the passage because Jesus is describing the Spirit of God, right? And if we understand the, the, the God being three in one, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, realistically, Jesus is describing himself. Right? So if you think about how you would describe yourself, if, if you went, maybe think about your first day of high school or first day of camp or first day of meeting somebody else and, and someone were to ask you who you are, you'd probably start off with your name. I think a name is a pretty important thing about you. God knows you by name. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said the Holy Spirit gave it a name. And then you would probably describe something important about you, something that makes you, you, whether it's, whether it's your grade, whether it's where you're from, whether it's what sport you play, it's something that's important that describes who you are in the shortest number of words as possible. And that's what Jesus did. He said, listen, the Holy Spirit is a mystery. You're never going to know where it came from or where it's going. But you don't question that it exists, right? You don't question that wind exists, so don't question that the Spirit of God exists. Just like if you were to describe who you were to somebody else, you don't expect them to do fact-checking on you to say, well, are you really from Shelton? Are you really a soccer player? Are you really uh, this and that? And that's what Jesus is trying to say. He's saying, listen, the Holy Spirit is a mystery. And because Jesus is with God in the beginning, with with uh, the Holy Spirit and God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. He's saying, listen, I am a mystery. And you don't need to understand me with your brains. You don't need to understand me with logic, with books, with commentary, with, with the, the mentor in the, in the synagogue that you learned from your entire life. See, what Jesus is saying is that, is that, you have to change your, your outlook from here or your understanding, your belief from here to here. It has to be from your heart. So what Jesus is saying about himself is that we are allowed to let go of the burden of having to prove 
why we believe what we believe. We're relieved of the burden of, of having to show facts of why God exists or why Jesus exists. We're relieved of having to prove it because it says that if you believe, that's all you need to do. And belief doesn't come from your brain. Belief comes from your heart. And if you believe, then you get to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, to be a part of that Holy Spirit that allows, that you allow um, the Holy Spirit to blow where it will. That's where the whole phrase of, of living by the Spirit or, or go with the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, you don't know where it's coming from. We never will. And we don't know where it's pushing us. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to push us, if we allow the Jesus to guide us with that Holy Spirit, we're going to be moved into areas that we never would have done on our own. And it's scary. And we don't know why we believe and why we have that gut feeling of, of being pushed in a direction that we don't know where we're going. But listen to what Jesus says happens if we do. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that who, who, whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Remember last week we talked about, about living. This everlasting life is not just when you die, it's, it's life now. And your heart can be pumping and your, your lungs can be working, but you may not be living right now. But if you believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that, that he is the spirit, just like the wind that you feel on your cheek, and if you follow him, if you believe in who he is in your heart, despite all of the logic, despite all of the things that, that the world says we need to do to prove that something exists, we can have life today. Life. Jesus says, I come so that they may have life, but have it in abundance. That means you can have abundant life today if you just believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So why do you believe? In what you believe and are you ready to believe with your heart to put aside all logic to put aside all of the, the the things that the world says we need to do to to believe in something and just believe in your heart because if you have belief in jesus you have life and life abundant and everlasting life so if you're willing to to give that a shot i'd love to talk to you about it let's pray Heavenly God, we thank you for your son, for, for the mystery that he is, for the mystery that you are, for the Holy Spirit that blows us in directions that, that we have no idea where we're going, but we know that if it's of your will, it's to a good place. Lord, give us the strength to believe, to, to put aside the doubts in our heads and, and start to believe in our hearts so that we can find true peace and true life and abundance in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Catch you next week, folks.